Good morning. It's day 35 of our Stay Home, Stay Safe devotional series. It is Monday, April 27th. Uh, and as we work our way through the book of Ephesians with our devotions, today we come to Ephesians chapter 2. And we'll read the first section here of this, which is the first 10 verses, which really is a beautiful um, account of the gospel message and what it means to you and me uh, as individual people and to our faith and our life with God forever in heaven. And it really stresses the grace of our God, how he acted in undeserved love to save us as sinners when we were in no position to even want it, yet alone do anything about it ourselves. And so the Apostle Paul begins this section by making the point that we were dead. Uh, and, and we'll elaborate more on that after we listen to the reading. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised, up, raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no man can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. As we listen to that section, the Apostle Paul makes it very clear that on our own, before the gospel message has been shared with us, spiritually speaking, we are dead. Of course, you and I understand that once a person is dead, there's no longer any power in that body to do anything. And so if we are spiritually dead, according to the Lord, that means we have no power to choose to believe in Christ. We have no power to make a decision that now we're going to change our life and live for the glory of God. Because of that sin, we are dead. In fact, not just dead, but the Apostle Paul makes the point here, because of that sin, we were objects of God's wrath. What a terrible place to be. When we look on the pages of Scripture and we see examples of God's wrath coming down against sin, we see things like the... Egyptian army being completely destroyed, the whole army, not a single survivor in the waters of the Red Sea as they pursued the Israelites out of Egypt. We see cities like Sodom and Gomorrah having burning sulfur rain down on them and completely destroying every single person who lived in that city because of the terrible rebellion and sinfulness that those people had in their daily lives. They had no use for God. They wanted nothing to do with God. And the Bible says that that's you and me by nature. We are objects of God's wrath. That's what we all deserve. Until you move a little bit further down, and the point is made, it is by grace you have been saved. That means we don't deserve it. it means we can't earn it. It's not a paycheck that we get for being uh, really good at, at behaving. But it is by grace, undeserved love. In fact, it means that it's just the opposite of what we deserve. And what God has done in grace is he has sent Jesus Christ to be our Savior so that whoever believes in him might be saved. It is by grace we have been saved through faith. The Holy Spirit works through the Word of God to create that faith in our hearts and to keep us in that faith through that Word of God so that this grace that God has showered down upon us will bring to fulfillment His plan of salvation in our individual lives 
as he will guide us through this life and into the life that waits us at home with our brother Christ and with our Heavenly Father, our, our Heavenly Father uh, for all eternity. And so as we look at this section of Scripture, we can only marvel at the love that God has shown to each of us as individuals as he has found a way to get this message proclaimed in our lives so that we hear it, so that the Holy Spirit might work through it, enter into our hearts and create that faith through grace that makes us alive now for Christ and alive in such a way that now we want to live our lives in a way that gives glory to God with the power that comes from the Word of God that is living in our hearts through that grace. And it is by grace we have been saved through faith. This is not of ourselves so that no one can boast. We don't have bragging rights about the fact that we're going to be in heaven because it's nothing that we've done, nothing that we deserve. In fact, on our own, we would have been destroyed by God. But instead, by the grace of God, we now know that we have a place waiting for us in heaven. And that's good news that is just too good to keep to ourselves. And that's why God calls us to be his witnesses, to take a message like this that tells us that it is by grace and grace alone that we are saved and share it with all people because God's grace is intended for all people so that the Holy Spirit might work through the word in their hearts and lives and bring them to join us in God's family for eternity. Let us go together now and thank our Lord for this wonderful gift of grace as we go to him in prayer. And then also we include a special prayer today for those who are working in the health system around us and caring for us. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to be our one and only Savior. We thank you for the grace that motivated you to send him to suffer and die in our place so that we might be saved. We thank you for the grace that sent your Holy Spirit into our lives through the word of God to change our hearts, to take those dead hearts and revive them, make them alive for Christ in a way that serves God and gives glory to him with our daily lives. Oh Lord, we pray that we never Never take for granted this grace and this salvation that you have given to us, and especially the high price that you paid so that we might have it. O oh Lord, keep us ever faithful to this message. Keep us ever holding on to it as something that is sacred, something that we never want to lose, so that as we go through this life, we have the confidence and the assurance, not only of your undeserved love, but of the fact that that love means that we have eternal salvation, forgiveness of sins, and that we have a place waiting for us at your side in heaven for all eternity. We come before you now, O oh God, with the knowledge that you have created us and are also able to restore us. Because you are the great physician, we pray for those whom you use to perform your works of healing. We rejoice that your spirit leads men and women to become doctors, nurses, dentists, research scientists, medical technicians, orderlies, and hospital staff members. We thank and praise you for the miracles you perform through them. Dear God, keep our minds open to new truths concerning the cause and cure of disease. Help us to realize that our talents and knowledge are gifts from you to be used to serve all men. Most of all, we ask you to fill the hearts of the medical staff people everywhere with your love, your patience, and your compassion. We especially thank you for the bless and ask for your blessing upon those members of our congregation who have dedicated their life of service to you and mankind. Draw them closer to your son Jesus as their Lord, their guide, and their, sa and their Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. <laughs>